Hi, I'm Gidon from thetechnologyman.com. The All Powers 500 Watt Power Station has a big 606 watt hour battery, but is one of the lightest and most compact units I've tested in this category. And it has a couple of features that make it stand out amongst similar offerings from other companies. I'll also be looking at the accompanying All Powers 100 watt solar panel that turns the unit into a portable solar generator. These power stations are perfect for power cuts, camping, travel, festivals, and around the house and out and about to charge all your tech. The prices do tend to vary, so please check the links down below. They're not particularly cheap. So I hope this video will help you make the right choice. Let's take a closer look. Inside the box, you get the AC adapter, the APSS007 power station itself, and an instruction manual. Unfortunately, there's no car charging cable that usually comes with these portable chargers or any additional cables for charging off a solar panel. The power station is lighter and more compact than other comparable power stations I've tested. It weighs just over 5.4 kilograms and you can see its dimensions on the screen. The Bluetti and Jackery are over 600 grams heavier and the EcoFlow River Max is almost 2.5 kilograms heavier at 7.8 kilograms. Yet despite its size and weight, it has a 606 watt hour lithium ion battery inside which is more than the Blue Eti, Jackery, and even the EcoFlow, at least on paper. I will be testing this claim capacity shortly. That should be enough to run a 60 watt mini fridge for at least 10 hours, or a 55 inch TV for around the same time. Or charge the latest 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro with its 100 watt hour battery around five times. Or a more typical 50 watt hour laptop at least 10 times from completely flat. It feels well built with a simple, mostly uncluttered boxy design. But like its contemporaries, it still has no water resistance rating which always puzzles me considering their intended outdoor use. The left side of the unit has two DC inputs, one 5521 port to use with the included AC adapter and one Anderson power pole port to connect up to a solar panel. Then there's a 12 volt 10 amp car socket adapter with its dust cover and below that an air inlet vent. The front of the unit has two 220 volt AC sockets that will accept UK as well as international plugs. These sockets support 500 watts continuous output with a thousand watt surge peak. They operate at 50 Hz here in the UK, but you can switch them to 60 Hz via the smartphone app, which might be useful for travel. Underneath the AC sockets, there's a one watt LED light, the power button, which can also turn on Bluetooth, the DC outputs power button that turns on the USB-A ports, the car socket output, and the 12 volt DC outputs, and the AC outputs power button that needs a three to five second press to switch on and off to avoid accidental operation. Then there's the LCD display, which shows a Bluetooth icon if active, remaining time to discharge or charge the built-in battery, depending on how much power is going in or out, a graphical display of the battery capacity with an exact percentage underneath, and how much power is going out or coming in. There's also a fan icon that comes on when the fan is operational, and various icons indicating which ports are in use. It's a useful display with decent viewing angles indoors, but it's harder to see outdoors in bright sunlight. And the display can only show either input power or output power and always shows output power if anything is connected to any of the AC or DC outputs and even if just the AC subsystem is turned on with nothing connected, which already uses around 6 watts. It would be nice if you could switch across to check input power, perhaps using a single press of the AC power button. This would be particularly useful when charging via solar, where input power can vary considerably. Also, it's a minor point, but I'm not sure why watts are displayed as watt A. Perhaps it's wattage truncated. Finally, there's a second one watt LED light. Both LEDs have their own power switches with one level of brightness and no flashing SOS mode. They are usefully bright, but I still think a floodlight like on the Blue Eti AC50S is more useful. The right of the unit has three USB-A ports, two of these with orange tabs at 18 watt Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 ports, and the other one's a standard five volt port. Then there's a two-way 60 watt USB-C power delivery port that can be used to both charge the unit and as an output to charge other USB power delivery devices like laptops. This port is always operational, you don't need to turn anything on. Beside the USB ports are two 12 volt 5 amp 5525 DC outputs and below all these ports is an exhaust vent with a fan. This fan turns on as the unit heats up, pulling cool air from the inlet vent on the other side and expelling hot air to try and keep the temperature of the unit down. The top of the power station has a folding handle that's slightly rubberized for comfort but also holds it firmly in its closed position when not being used. I guess to stop it rattling around in a camper van or RV. There's an accompanying smartphone app to control the power station. After turning Bluetooth on with a long press of the power button, you start up the All Powers app on your smartphone and tap on the smartphone icon in the top right of the screen. You can then tap on the S500 to connect. The app is fairly basic, allowing you to remotely turn on and off the LED lights and the DC and AC ports. You can also switch between 50 Hz and 60 Hz. 
You can also monitor the input and output power and check the battery level, which is useful since the built-in display only shows either input or output power. I did have an issue with the Bluetooth module on my first unit where the connection was unreliable and even when it connected, I couldn't use all the features of the app. All Power sent me a second unit, which so far is working properly. There hasn't been any updates to the app for over a year and the app doesn't feel finished with some dialogue boxes having a mixture of English and Chinese. The accompanying app for the EcoFlow River Max I reviewed recently is on another level if you like the idea of remote support of your power station. There are various ways to charge the All Power's power station. There's only one option included in the box. The power station supports pass-through charging so you can use any of the outputs whilst the unit is charging. The included 20 volt, 5 amp or 100 watt AC adapter plugs into the 5521 input on the All Powers. This will charge the unit from completely flat to 100% charge in 5-6 to six hours at just under 100 watts. This seems slow after just testing the EcoFlow River Max, which charges directly off mains at up to 500 watts, with the full charge taking around one third of the time it takes to charge this unit. And although the EcoFlow weighs significantly more, you don't need to carry an AC adapter. The All Powers AC adapter weighs just over 700 grams, including the figure 8 power lead. You also lose the UPS or uninterruptible power supply functionality of the EcoFlow that's a useful side benefit of mains charging. You can't just use a more powerful charger either. The maximum input is 100 watts or 20 volts at 5 amps of the included charger. But there is one slightly hidden feature that enables faster charging. The two-way USB-C port can charge the unit at up to 60 watts. And you can charge via this port while charging with either the included AC adapter or a solar panel, which I'll discuss shortly. This shortens the charging time considerably. I was able to charge the unit from flat to 100% in around two and a half hours at just under 170 watts according to the unit's display. Although this is a little misleading since the LCD screen changes from charge time remaining to hello when at 100% charge, but then continues to charge for up to another two hours, still at a fairly high input power. It was more like four and a half hours before the charging input dropped to around a three watt trickle charge. So if you want the full capacity of the battery, I'd leave it charging well after the hello greeting appears. You will need a USB-C cable and a 60 watt USB power delivery charger to use this feature. But as well as boosting the overall charging speed when you're in a hurry, it's also very convenient when you're traveling and don't want to have to take the heavy AC adapter. I tried various USB-C power delivery chargers and it looks like you need one that can output 20 volts. I found the display on the All Powers was way off using the 30 watt output from a RAV Power powerhouse charger. It displayed around 70 watts, which I confirmed with the USB power meter was in fact the 30 watt max output from the RAV Power. I couldn't get the All Powers to actually charge the RAV Power powerhouse. No matter what order I plugged it in, the RAV Power always sent its output to the All Powers. Charging off the EcoFlow River Max's 100 watt output did deliver the full 60 watt input to the All Powers, still displayed at around 70 watts. You can also charge off a 12 volt car socket output, although again you'll have to supply your own cable. I use the cable from the EcoFlow River Max with an XT60 DC5521 adapter I soldered up. I only got around 57 watts, which seemed low, but checking the manual is actually slightly higher than the spec maximum of 50 watts. This is much lower than other power stations I've tested. The Jackery Explorer 500 can charge at 85 watts off a car socket, and the Blue Eti and EcoFlow manage around 100 watts. I'm not sure why there's this limit on the all powers, but it would take over 10 hours to charge a unit off your car cigarette lighter outlet. I even tried using the Anderson PowerPole port with the Jackery car charging cable and their adapter, but still got just over 50 watts. Finally, you can charge off a solar panel using the Anderson PowerPole port, which is why these power stations are often called solar generators. There's a built-in MPPT controller for more efficient solar charging, and the input supports 16.6 volts to 24 volts up to 5 amps, which would be a maximum of 120 watts with the right solar panel in perfect conditions. I tried the power station with the All Powers AP SP027 100 watt solar panel, which should be a good match, and the All Powers manual quotes 8 hours to charge the 500 watt All Powers off this panel. It's a fairly compact single fold panel with polycrystalline cells. You can see its dimensions and weight on screen. There's no IP rating, but it's listed as waterproof. Unlike the power station, it comes with a generous assortment of cables to connect to the popular integrated MC4 connectors. There's an MC4 to Anderson cable to connect to the All Powers. There's also an MC4 to DC5521 with several adapters, including the 7.9mm connector. You can use this adapter with any of the Jackery Explorer range and the Blue Eti AC50S. The only adapter missing is an MC4 to XD60 connector to plug into the EcoFlow, so you'd have to solder something up or purchase an additional cable. All the cables are stored in a zip pouch together with two legs that have to be buttoned onto the solar panel. These two legs can be partially unbuttoned and pulled out to tilt the solar panel towards the sun, 
after opening up the Velcro closure. It is a little fiddly positioning the thin legs to hold the panel up, but it's still pretty quick to set up. It's not as convenient to use as a slim Jackery Solar Saga 100 with its magnetic closure and wider legs, but it is a little smaller and lighter. I plugged in the MC4 connectors to the MC4 to Anderson cable and plugged this into the power station. It's still winter here in the UK, but the sun did make a rare appearance. Even quite late in the afternoon, I did briefly get 70 watts from the solar panel, which was a little more than I was expecting. One thing to note is you can't charge off solar and the AC adapter simultaneously. I wasn't able to use a DC5521 and Anderson inputs at the same time. The DC5521 input will always take priority. But you can use a two-way USB-C port whilst charging with a solar panel to speed up charge times. Once the weather improves, I'll do a comparison video on the various solar panels I've accumulated to try and help you find one that fits your needs. But initial impressions of the All Powers 100 watt panel are favourable. I started off testing the 12 volt 10 amp car socket outlet. I used the port to provide DC power to my Hota D6 Plus LiPo charger, which charges the batteries for my RC cars. I could pull the full 120 watts off this socket charging a 4S LiPo battery. I also tried charging the EcoFlow River Max and got over 100 watts of output. I tested the port with a multimeter and unfortunately it's not a regulated output, which means the voltage will drop as the capacity of the battery is depleted. This will reduce the power output, but more importantly may drop the output voltage below what the connected device requires. I also tested the two DC5525 12 volt 5 amp outputs. These also aren't regulated, but might still be useful for powering LED lights for example. I tried plugging this 12 volt LED lighting strip which used around 15 watts. Since the output is not regulated, this light strip will dim as the battery level depletes. The two orange tabbed USB-A ports support Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0 at up to 12 volts 1.5 amps or 18 watts with a compatible device. The remaining port is a standard 5 volt port but supports up to 3 amps or 15 watts total power. I tested all these ports to their maximum capacity and found no issues, and they can all be used simultaneously as required. I've already discussed the USB-C port for charging the unit, but it also supports 60 watt USB power delivery output for charging anything from this Lenovo Chromebook to smaller MacBooks. I would have liked to have seen 100 watt output like on the EcoFlow to charge even more power hungry devices, but 60 watts is enough for plenty of devices. There's no wireless charging pad like on the smaller 300 watt all powers unit and the Bluetti AC50S I reviewed last year. The power station has two 500 watt pure sine wave AC outlets, which are 220 volts here in the UK and 110 volts in the US. I confirmed their pure sine wave output, which is important for sensitive electronics with a graphical multimeter. As I mentioned earlier, the sockets will accept international as well as British plugs, which is a nice touch. I tried plugging in various adapters that come with a GoPro supercharger and they all fit fine. I would have preferred the sockets on the side of the unit like on the EcoFlow. Oversized plugs and even the cables for standard plugs either obstruct the LCD display or make the power buttons awkward to press. As I've mentioned in my other reviews on these power stations, you should have some idea of what you're plugging in. The rated power of the device you're plugging in shouldn't exceed 500 watts. But also the startup power, which can be a lot higher, can't exceed 1000 watts. Anything with a motor can sometimes drop to three times its rated power when it starts up. It's useful to have a cheap energy monitoring plug to ensure the power station you buy has a big enough inverter to run the devices you're planning to plug in. A 500 watt inverter is plenty for most of your tech, like laptop chargers, fans, speakers, televisions, etc. But it's not enough for most things with an element, like a kettle, toaster, or a sandwich maker. I tried plugging in a range of power tools to really test out the power station. It coped pretty well, and I even got it to run a 720 watt Bosch grinder although it did overload the inverter several times when starting up. The unit will beep and the AC icon on the LC display blinks. Just unplug the device and turn the unit back on again. If your tool has variable speed, you can try starting off slower and then ramp the speed up if you find it tripping the power station. This grinder doesn't have variable speed, but connecting it to the EcoFlow, which has a very fast and responsive display of instantaneous power output, measured over 1300 watts on several occasions on startup. So it's not surprising it overloads the all powers. But once up and running, it worked fine, even under load, and at close to 600 watts, well above the rated 500 watts of the inverter. Most other power tools I tried ran fine, including a 310 watt Festool sander, a 550 watt Bosch belt sander, and a 650 watt Ryobi SDS drill. Although with the SDS drill, I did have to ramp up the speed slowly. As a more control test, I filled a studio lamp head with 100 watt incandescent bulbs. I was able to power six 100 watt bulbs before overloading the inverter when I tried a seventh although it did run for 10 to 20 seconds. The six bulbs ran at around 570 watts for five minutes, which is pretty impressive. 
I ran a capacity test on the battery to check its 606 watt hour rated capacity. I used a single 100 watt incandescent bulb for this test as a constant resistive load. I made sure the battery was fully charged, leaving it plugged in for a further 3 hours after it reached 100% charge on the LCD display. It took just over 6 hours to completely discharge the power station and the energy monitoring plug measured 541 watt hours, which is far better than I was expecting. That's an efficiency of 89%, which is well above what you'd expect after conversion losses. Typically these power stations are around 80% efficient using AC power. All powers quote 85% efficiency off AC power and 90% off DC. The power station didn't get too hot in my testing, even under a heavy load. At close to its maximum output for 20 minutes or so, the hottest it got in certain areas was a warm to the touch approximate 40 degrees centigrade, measuring with a FLIR thermal imaging camera. The AC charger got similarly warm to the touch too, charging at its full 100 watt output. When you turn the AC on, the cooling fan comes on briefly and then turns off. The power station is then silent in operation until the fan comes on again, usually after a few minutes when using AC power. The fan is quite noisy. I measured around 47 decibels one meter from the unit, around 10 decibels louder than background noise. Like most of the power stations I've tested so far, the All Powers uses a lithium ion battery, which isn't replaceable and only has around a 500 charge discharge life cycle. I'd really like to see power stations like this switch across to lithium ion phosphate cells, which can support 2000 plus charge discharge cycles. The All Powers 500 watt power station is compact and relatively lightweight considering its capacity and inverter's genuine 500 watt output. Probably my favourite feature is the USB-C power delivery charging, but although not the fastest charging method, it's very convenient. It's disappointing there's no car charging cable included and the Bluetooth app needs some work. And it's still pretty slow to charge off the included 100 watt charger, especially when you compare it to units like the EcoFlow which can charge directly off mains at up to 500 watts. Build quality is generally good. I did have an issue with the power button getting stuck in its on position several times, although so far I've always been able to jiggle it free. I will be testing the All Powers 100 watt solar panel more thoroughly in a group test soon, but first impressions are good. It's compact, has an excellent assortment of accompanying cables, and even in non-ideal conditions I got around 70% of its rated maximum output. Its main competitor is the Bluetti or PowerEck in the UK AC50S, which is currently around the same price on Amazon. The AC50S has wireless charging and a more useful floodlight, but a far less capable 300 watt inverter and I measured around 100 watt hours less capacity. The Jackery Explorer 500 is currently more expensive, but Jackery often have discounts. It has a similarly capable 500 watt inverter and I measured a similar capacity. Its build quality is marginally better, but it has no USB-C power delivery charging, only a single AC outlet and a far more basic display. The EcoFlow River Max is a fair bit more expensive and also doesn't have USB-C power delivery charging and its measured capacity was a little underwhelming. But it can charge far quicker, has a beefier 600 watt inverter, 100 watt USB power delivery output, a larger, more informative display, and a far more capable accompanying app. All these units are heavier and larger than the All Powers. I've reviewed all these power stations if you want to find out more about them. There'll be links on screen and down below in the video's description. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have the All Powers, what do you think of it? If there's something else you want me to take a look at, let me know down below. And as always, if you have any questions, please ask. I read every comment and will do my best to respond. I do hope you found this video useful. Please like the video if you did. I'm releasing videos every week on the latest technology and how to get the most out of it. So please make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to tap the bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as a new video gets uploaded. Thanks for watching.